Portland, Oregon, a city of 380,000, mobilizes for the biggest air raid test yet undertaken in the nation. 1,000 blocks in the heart of the city is the drill area from which 200,000 people must be evacuated or sheltered. All movements are coordinated through switchboards of the air filter center. It is zero hour and the sirens wail their warning. Civil defense officials keep close tabs on the drill from rooftop vantage points. As the alert sounds, traffic gradually comes to a halt. As Operation Greenlight progresses, pedestrians hurry through the pouring rain to shelters, with military personnel making an appraisal of the drill's success. Thirty minutes after the alert, Portland is a deserted city in a grimly realistic exercise. Full military honors welcome Prince Albert of Belgium as he arrives in Washington, D.C. for a one-day stopover on his state visit to America, which is taking him to military, industrial, and educational points of interest from coast to coast. He'll proceed to Annapolis, where Prince Albert, himself a lieutenant in the Belgian Navy, will share in a United States midshipman's life, furthering his own education, as well as bearing a message of friendship and goodwill to America from the Belgian people. A ceremony which never loses its novelty and simple dignity opens as the royal coach bearing Queen Juliana arrives at the Knights Hall in The Hague for the annual opening of Parliament. Accompanied by Prince Consort Bernhard, the Queen enters the hall, where she will read the message officially opening Holland's governing body. Princesses Beatrix and Irene are interested spectators as their mother takes her place on the throne and begins her speech which voices great hope for the results of the Geneva Conference. With her declaration of the opening, a well-loved queen is cheered to the echo. <laughs> Foreign Minister Harold Macmillan of Britain, Secretary of State Dulles, and Francis Antoine Pinay meet to map strategy for their forthcoming meeting in Geneva with Foreign Minister Molotov of Russia. Disarmament and European security take top place on their agenda. versus Dodgers, the Hatfields and McCoys of postseason baseball feuding once again in the 52nd World Series. 64,000 are at Yankee Stadium, where Casey Stengel and Walt Alston go with their aces in the opener of the 1955 Classic. The opposing pitchers are Whitey Ford for New York and Big Don Newcomb for Brooklyn. This is the sixth series between the two clubs, and Maya Wagner does the honors as the fans wait to see if this is the year for Brooklyn. They've yet to win a World Series, and Carl Farillo gets them off to a good start in the second inning, hitting a home run into the right field corner. The Dodgers have drawn first blood, and Dodger fans yell for more. The Yankees have won 16 World Championships, the Dodgers none in seven attempts. Farillo started something Dodger fans are hoping maybe this is next year. Jackie Robinson steps in against Ford. Deep into left center, Irv Noren races after Robinson's blast. Jackie really teed off on Ford. Here comes the relay. Jackie slides, he's safe. Next man up for Brooklyn is Don Zimmer. Another hit, a bloop single to center that drops in front of Noren. And quicker than you can say, Jackie Robinson, the Dodger third baseman trots in from third, making it two to nothing favor of the Dodgers. But Brooklyn Joy fades quickly in the bottom of the second when Elston Howard swings away. Howard lashes a screaming line drive that sails into the left field seats. Joe Collins, who had walked, precedes Howard across the plate, and the score is all tied up at two all. But only for an inning. In the Dodger third, Duke Snyder gets the range on Whitey Ford. Going, going, 
A home run for the Duke, his sixth in World Series competition. The long ball is the story in today's big game in the big town, and Snyder's wallet gives the Dodgers the edge once again. Can they hold their lead? Not long. The Yanks tied it up in their half of the third inning, and then Joe Collins unties it in the fourth. And again, the story is the long ball. Collins is an underrated 234 hitter, but he's a big gun for the Yanks today. Collins completes the circuit, and it's 4-3 New York, and Joe isn't done with the heroics. He comes up in the sixth with Berra on base. Boom! Ferrello and Snyder race back, but it's up in the seats for another home run, the fifth of the game and number two for Joe Collins. Yogi escorts Joe home for another glad hand reception at home plate and in the Yankee dugout. 6-3 is the score, but it is not the final score. With one run in in the eighth and Jackie Robinson on third, pinch hitter Kellert faces Whitey Ford. The windup, and here comes Robinson, trying to steal home. He's safe, says the ump. He's out, says Yogi Berra, and brother is Yogi Hoppin. And so the opening game ends with the Yankees winning 6-5. Berra still saying he was out, and Dodger fans rather mournfully saying, wait till tomorrow. <laughs>